Tēnā koutou, kia ora koutou katoa, no mai haere mai, welcome to New Zealand where we launch a very special event here, it's almost 5pm New Zealand time and at 5pm we have the launch of the Dilmar Global Tea Party, a very special event supporting a hundred and celebrating 150 years of pure salon tea, in fact the celebration of the first crop ever planted by an amazing Scotsman by the name of James Taylor. So wherever you are in the world and whatever page you're watching on, welcome to the Dilmar, Dilmar International page, Dilmar New Zealand and your Fix TV. Send us your tea stories, say hello and help us celebrate this very special occasion here, live from a very iconic place in New Zealand. We're here at Eden Park, home of some of the most amazing events ever to happen here in the country, which is why we've got this incredible tea party happening for you right now. And I've got guests lining up to share their tea story. So first up, come on over. This is my lovely Facebook friend. You may have seen him as one of the judges, in fact, of MasterChef New Zealand. This is Raymond Vinny. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Hey, isn't this so fantastic? Good. This is just oh, amazing. And we're first in the world. We are the yeah. first in the world. In fact, this global tea party is happening right around the world, east to west, in every time zone at 5 p.m. Exactly, and that's us forever to do it. And our It's incredible. Now you have a special connection to Sri Lanka, don't you? I do, I do. I went, oh, three years ago I went on a ship, then a ship's to tour of um, Sri Lanka. Courtesy of Dilma, fantastic. And I went on that, and it was just the best experience. And honestly, Sri Lanka is a destination. It's a knockout. Yeah. Totally agree. I can't wait to go. So this event is hosted, in fact, by the wonderful team at Dilma, yes. celebrating the pure salon tea. And look, we all have those tea stories, and this is one of the reasons why I think tea brings us together, doesn't it? Tea, that's what it's for. You know, it's a, commu it's a communal thing. It's when you stop and, you know, you, you take more time with people and you enjoy doing it because you're a great cup of tea. I certainly agree. Now, we can see who's on the, on the feed here as well. So if you've got a great tea story, message in and share your tea story. We're going to be live for the next hour and you get to enjoy the celebrations with us wherever you are around the world. We have some amazing guests coming on. We've got Oh, oh Sir Graham great Henry. Yep. So excited to have him here, an icon as the All Blacks captain. Coach. Oh, coach. Yeah. <laughs> coach. coach. Listen, yeah, listen yeah. to me, All Blacks coach here in New Zealand. And so many other guests that you need to know. Now, Ray, I have to ask. Money. Yes. You're a Master Chef, let's be honest. And as a Master Chef, can you give me your top tips on what you would pair with tea? Yeah, what would I pair with tea? Oh, any sort of fantastic New Zealand baking, of course, because there's nothing I like more than you know, like a crunchy cookie or a piece of cake or something and a cup of tea. English style, really, really good. But you can do all sorts of things with tea. One of the things we had to do um, when we went to Sri Lanka, or the chefs, was we had to prepare three dishes using tea. So you can actually incorporate it into your food if you want to. It can be done really well. Yeah, that's, that's, we can talk about that later. We can talk about that later. Yeah. Now, if you have a great tea recipe to share or a great tea story, we can see who's watching in the feed. Oh, it says, I've just seen Melody Simon message in. Hello, Melody. Melody said she can't hear. Now, Melody, you, you might have to refresh your browser there because um, we've got sound on this end. I hope you can hear us now. Hello to um, Jonathan Holdsworth, who's watching as well. Jonathan is actually the brand manager for Dilmar New Zealand, so yeah. I can see he's watching the stream there as well. Do feel free to share yeah. your stories and tell us how much you love tea as well. It's pretty exciting to have you guys here. Now remember, if you've just joined the stream, we are in fact here celebrating 150 years of pure Ceylon tea. It's a celebration wherever you are in the world. Make sure you join us. I believe the proceedings are about to get underway. Oh, we've got some things to show you. Have a look out on the scoreboard out here in Eden Park. You'll see there's a very special message out there on the screen. It says, New Zealand congratulates Sri Lanka on 150 years of Ceylon tea, the finest tea on earth. Look at that. That's how we like to celebrate here in New Zealand. That's amazing. And I believe the official proceedings uh, are about to get underway. Wonder if I can have your attention, please.
Thank you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome along this afternoon on this um, lovely day outside, sort of. Uh, my name is Nigel Scott. I'm the DNZ GM MC. It sort of sounds a little bit like a rap artist, but don't worry, I'm not going to go down that track. Uh, look, it's my, my great pleasure to welcome everyone here uh, to celebrate 150 years of Salon Tea uh, around the world. Uh, it's my even greater, greater pleasure to be able to welcome our guests of honour, Sir Graham Henry, uh, Sir Raywin Henry, and, sorry, Mr. Carl Mills. Uh, who are going to be able to share a few of their experiences in Sri Lanka with us a little bit later on. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I'd also like to acknowledge uh, John Burton and Anne Burton. Uh, John and Anne are the business partners with Meryl J. Fernando in the Dilma New Zealand business here in New Zealand. Okay, um, I'm about to propose a toast, so can I make sure that uh, everybody has a glass or a cup of the world's finest tea, which happens to be over towards the back in front of them. We have a mocktail or a cocktail here, uh, or of course we have some fine, just happens to be Dilma tea, the world's finest at the back. While, uh, while you're charging your glasses, um, I'll just go through a couple of housekeeping things if I may, toilets, uh, are just through the door and to the left hand side and in case of an emergency uh, don't go out the doors here to the balcony shoot out the ones right here there's stairs straight outside or the way you came up and don't use the lift god forbid that that's going to be the case so we've got everybody with uh, <coughs> excuse me with their drinks before i propose the toast John, I'll, uh, I'll just get you, John, to uh, just have a look at the screen if you would, and we've got a message from, uh, from Meryl J. Fernando. As we celebrate 150 years of Ceylon tea, I'm happy to say I have been active in that industry, Ceylon tea, for nearly half of that period. I have enjoyed my association with the finest tea on earth. And I'm happy to say my Dilma took the finest Ceylon tea all over the world in many countries. Dilma is present in many, many five-star hotels, top airlines of the world, and in five-star restaurants. I wanted to say thank you for enjoying Dilma. The world's finest tea is grown in Ceylon and Ceylon's finest tea is Dilma. Do try it. So ladies and gentlemen, it's 5 p.m. Thursday the 6th of July. Uh, we're really pleased that New Zealand is the first country in the world in the time zone to be able to hold this global Ceylon tea party. It will be followed at this particular time in 40 other countries around the world. So with that, if you could charge your glasses and as I propose a toast to 150 years of Salon tea. Salon tea. Salon tea. Salon tea. And it just happens to be in a cocktail or a mocktail. <laughs> now, um, you probably guessed by now that um, We've got a little bit of a, uh, a rugby theme with Sir Graham here and with Carl Mills, former New Zealand Black Cat cricketer. And that we're, we're at the uh, one of New Zealand's uh, sporting icons, Eden Park. So as we go a little bit further into, uh, into, the, uh, into the event, um, I'll be asking Sir Graham and uh, Lady Raywin, Henry, if they'll share some of their experiences from Sri Lanka when they went up in 2013, uh, where there was some rugby training, etc. done. Uh, followed by Carl with uh, some of your cricketing experiences up in Sri Lanka as well. So up until that time, we'll have a little, wee bit of a break. And um, as I look around the room, there are a number of people here that uh, I know have been up to Sri Lanka, uh, Brett McGregor, Volker, Ray McVinney, Mary Taylor, 
Um, so if you'd like to mix and mingle, have a bit of a chat, enjoy uh, a cup of the world's finest, which Carol is pouring for us over there, and uh, we'll come back together shortly. Thank you. stream a welcome no my Heidi my welcome to New Zealand we are here at the iconic location Auckland's Eden Park home of many great uh, successes and history well, I think maybe we should be explaining this a wee bit for people who aren't in New Zealand or aren't from New Zealand Eden Park is like rug New Zealand rugby nerve central you know, like it's, it's the, yeah total like centre of the universe as far as rugby goes. It, it certainly is, I totally agree. And you're here with us for a very special event. Today is the celebration of 150 years of Ceylon tea. 150, 150 years? That's pretty good going. That's when it? they first planted yeah. the first crop. Yeah, and, and honestly, you know, the quality just gets better and better and better. Yeah, great stuff. I love it. I drink it all the time. So do I. I have probably 10 cups of tea a day. I'm a huge fan and of course, what's in my cupboard? Dilma. Dilma. It's the only way to go. Yep. This is the launch of the global 24-hour Dilma Tea Party to celebrate 150 years of Ceylon Tea. Now I have to say hello to Abby Leaf who's watching here in New Zealand. Abby. Hello Tony Narang who's watching here in New Zealand. Jonathan Kane Holdsworth, good to see you. We can actually see who's watching the stream. So send us in your tea stories because we'd love to hear from you. And we want to know how tea has become an institution in your home, in your life. How I can't live without yeah, yeah, yeah. it. I feel like I'm outing myself right now. It's fun. Yeah, anyone been to Sri Lanka and you know seen the tea, the tea plantations? I mean, incredibly beautiful. Mm. Yeah. Now you have spent some time in Sri Lanka. You met there with Dilma, is that right? I met there with Dilma on a chef's tour. Yeah, and we were all asked to do um, recipes that in some in some way use tea. We'll talk about that. Yeah. Now, if you are uh, somewhere else around the world and you're not sure who this lovely gentleman is, firstly, I'm Monique Bradley from Your Fix TV, and this is MasterChef Ray McVinney. Ray McVinney was, in fact, a judge on MasterChef New Zealand for five years. What was that experience like? Oh, that was a grueling experience, actually. I used to get very sore feet from having to stand there for so long, but, you know, stop whining. It was, a, it was a great experience, actually. You learn a lot, and whenever you have to judge, you always sort your ideas about what you think, and in this case, it's food, so you, you know, it's good for you, it makes you sort your ideas out. I totally yeah. agree. Now a question about MasterChef, yeah. did they ever use tea in any of their dishes, all the contestants? Oh, now that's really interesting. I seem to remember one person here perhaps using it for, was it a, um, like a sorbet or something? Yeah, I can't remember. But I, I have this different reflection. Yeah. All right, now we have a series of amazing interviews. You need to stick around because we have amazing people who all have their own tea story to share. But we can see the stream, so if you've got a tea story, just pop that in the news feed or um, just make sure that you, we know that you're there. So send us some hearts, send us some thumbs. Ray, we're going to chat a little bit more yeah, soon. Yeah, yeah. In the meantime, yeah. we've got a very special guest coming up. This is yeah. Nigel from Dilma. Come on over, Nigel. Oh, no, Thanks, Ray. Nigel, welcome to today's stream. Congratulations on a great day. How are you feeling? Thank you. Yeah, a little bit nervous actually, to be fair. I mean, I'm at the home of New Zealand rugby and New Zealand cricket, Eden Park. So you've got to be a bit nervous, don't you? Good to see you've got your tea with you, though. <laughs> Take my tea everywhere. I do too. I drink probably 10 cups a day. So let's talk about your connection to Delmar. What's your official position with the company and, and what's your tea story? Okay, um, I'm honoured, lucky enough to be the general manager at Delmar New Zealand. I've been with the brand from day one here in New Zealand, which is 1991. So uh, we were the second country in the world, unfortunately behind the Australians, uh, to launch. But um, 
I'm very pleased to say that we're the number one in the New Zealand market and have been for some time, so it's fantastic. Yeah, I love that. And of course, Dilma has become such an important part of every Kiwi household, to be fair. Everywhere I go, it's in all my friends' cupboards. Is your, I bet your cupboard's stocked up with Dilma, of course. You won't believe this, but um, it was my wife's birthday a couple of weeks ago, and I ran out. So, she wasn't talking to me. <laughs> Sorry about that, Angie. Yeah, yeah, okay. But... Um, yeah, look, and it's it's you know, we're very humbled by the way the Kiwis have taken to, to the brand. And it, it probably goes back a long way because Salon Tea, and that's why we're here today, celebrating 150 years of Salon Tea. And Dilma is just one of those brands which carry Salon Tea. But in New Zealand, up until about the 1970s, 90% of all of the tea that came into New Zealand came from Salon, Sri Lanka. Wow. Okay. Uh, and Salon, people will probably say, well, what does Salon mean? I don't remember Salon. Um, Salon was a country, um, and up until 1948 uh, became, got its independence from Britain, um, and the British, um, they, they had the, the tea uh, traditions that got put together uh, and built the industry. And then in 1972, Salon became Sri Lanka. That's where the, the, the catch with it is. So up until 1972, Salon tea was being exported all around the world into New Zealand. As I say, 90% of all tea was Salonese tea. Um, and of course now we all know it as Sri Lanka. So Salon as such has, has lost a little bit in regards to the name of the country. But as a single origin country, then that's what we hang our hat on. Salonese tea, one origin, single origin, which is Salon. Wow. You know a lot of stuff about tea, let's be honest. <laughs> which is good, you're in the right role for it. And clearly a tea lover. Now I believe we've got some very special guests here. You've lined up some pretty amazing people who have their own tea story. Tell us who you've got lined up this afternoon. Yeah, no, we've, uh, we've been very fortunate enough to be able to work with uh, a number of chefs within New Zealand. Um, we have Ray McVinney, who you've been speaking to. Uh, Ray's done some work with us uh, in Sri Lanka, uh, as well as when the Fernandos come to New Zealand, with Brett McGregor, uh, who's also, and Volker Marsek, who's the uh, executive chef from the chef from the Langer. Um, Simon Gault has been involved. Of course, he's only just opened up his new uh, new restaurant, yeah. so unfortunately he's not able to be here. Uh, and of course, we have Sir Graham Henry here. Not a chef, not that I'm aware of, but uh, Sir Graham's done a lot of work with us as well. Been, uh, been up to Sri Lanka, uh, run some rugby coaching up there, and has a little baby elephant named after his nickname of Ted. I just think that's super cute, and also he's an avid tea drinker, so that's what we love as well. Look, Nigel, thank you so much for joining us here. Thank you to all of you. Oh, we're going to zoom in on your <laughs> cup of tea. And what? in those famous words, do try it. <laughs> We've got a commercial in the making right there. <laughs> hey, Nigel, thank you so much. Thank and you. happy 150 years of Salon Tea. Super. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank, you. thank you. Now, we've got another very special guest coming up to chat with you guys. Now, if you've got any questions, if you want to say hi, or even if you want to share your tea story, do it in the news feed. We can see who's watching. So share your thoughts and share your love of tea because we love hearing from you. Now, a very special, very handsome guest here with me right now. This is winner of season one of New Zealand Master Chef. Yes. A long time ago. This is Brett ago. McGregor. How are you going, Brett? I'm doing very well, thank you. Thanks for inviting me on to the show. I'll tell you what, this is exciting. We are live, globally live, right now. This is amazing. And the thing that brings us together is tea. Yes. How's and tea featured in your life? Well, these guys have actually been the sponsor of, uh, of my show, Taste for Traveller, for the last couple of years. So um, they've enabled me to travel up to Sri Lanka, see what they're all about. And I think the resounding thing that I've taken away is that uh, it's a very supportive company. Um, they care about Sri Lanka, they care about what's going on there, and they care about what's going in our glasses. And, you know, when you've got a product that is so good, it just sings for itself. So that'd be good to me, and I'll always be good to them. Yeah, I agree. I know that Dilma is a big part of my pantry. I am obsessed with tea. I drink probably 10 cups of tea a day. That's why I have so much energy. I love it. Now, what's your tea story? Okay, so my tea story was I was uh, in Sri Lanka about seven months ago, um, and we managed to get up into the tree tea plantations which are magnificent so you're probably up around two and a half three thousand meters something like that 
And I thought it'd be great to get up in the morning, go for a run through the tea, the tea plantation. So I was running along and I could feel something um, kind of a little bit itchy, a little bit funny on my legs. And as I bent down and looked, I'd been running through where all the leeches were. So I was in the tea plantations getting covered in leeches. So it made me think that those guys that are picking the tea do a superb job in some pretty adverse um, conditions. So that's my only tea story other than enjoying a really good tea cocktail. <laughs> That is mind blowing. So if you ever take a tour, be mindful. There's leeches about, but I hear stick to the paths. Stick to the paths, and I hear the tea. The tea tours are truly amazing. I think it's probably one of the most beautiful things I've done. When you get up there, and the sun is coming up in the morning, and it's coming across the tea plantations, you can go in there. You can pick. You can see the whole drying process, the fermentation process. They take you through the whole thing, and like it's original. So it goes back. Maybe those some of those um, houses would be. Easily 170 years old, wow. um, and beautiful old oak buildings. So that whole experience of going and learning uh, the process is remarkable. So Sri Lanka as a holiday destination is one on the list. You know, if you never, if you love India and you love those countries, then you're always going to love Sri Lanka. But Sri Lanka is tiny, and it has got a lot of coastline, and it's beautiful. So you can enjoy the sun and, and, the, and the surf, or you can go up into the highlands and have a cup of tea. It's just amazing. It sounds so diverse and beautiful. I think it's now on my list as well. Thank you, Rip. Now, if you have just joined the stream, welcome. No, my hearty, my welcome to New Zealand. We are here celebrating 150 years of Ceylon tea, and what's not to love, really? It's part of our lives, and Dilma are hosting a global 24-hour tea party launching here at 5 p.m. in New Zealand. Now we are live streaming live from the iconic venue Eden Park, home of a lot of amazing events and sports wins here in New Zealand. And of course, this is a huge one, 150 years of tea. Mind-blowing. big week, a massive week, you know. This is a great cup. We brought another good cup home today. <laughs> and hopefully we keep this one on Saturday. That's right, it's been All very busy. It's, thanks, thanks, Brett, nice to see you. It has been very busy here in Auckland in New Zealand. We have had Team Emirates celebrating with a huge uh, parade through central Auckland. And we've got the final uh, game of uh, New Zealand versus the Lions here at Eden Park on Saturday night. It's all happening and we are so excited to have you here on the stream watching with us. Now, if you want to share your tea story, we'd love you to share that in the stream with us. We can see that you're watching all around the world and we love having you with us here celebrating 150 years of pure Ceylon tea, the best tea you can get, single origin tea. And I know it's been part of my life. In fact, I have a great tea story. So my mum is a cooking teacher and I grew up in a kitchen. And for me, tea was always a big part of, of my life because I love to bake. So for me, I used to pretend when I was six uh, that I had my own cooking show in my kitchen. I used to pretend to be a very famous TV chef here in New Zealand, back in the day called Alison Holst. And I used to bake my own scones and I would finish that off with a nice big cup of tea. So tea's always been a huge part of my life. But I want to hear your tea stories. If you've got a tea story, share that with us and uh, we'd love to chat with you. Now this is a live stream, so we are live right now. Now we've got Jonathan coming in. Jonathan, come on in from Dilmar, New Zealand. Jonathan, happy celebration to you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. How are you feeling? Oh, good. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's nice to be able to celebrate uh, tea from Salon. I guess, you know, being with Dilma, we're fortunate we get to go up there uh, occasionally. I haven't been up for uh, about two years, unfortunately. Wow. Had a baby and things like that. Okay. So, <laughs> um, but beautiful country. Um, I'd say to anyone, if you get the opportunity to go up there, I'd go and visit Sri Lanka. Um, stunning country. Uh, it's you know, changed a lot over the years. They've been through some tough times. Um, and, uh, you know, you'd probably say tea got them through. Yeah. Um, and uh, nowadays, you know, it's really picking up. You know, tourism on the rise. Um, you know, it's opened up and travelled to some beautiful coastlines right up in the high country, up to the high mountains. Yes. Where the tea is We've growing. just had that chat with uh, Brett, actually, yeah. and he said it was just amazing yeah. and mind blowing. Yeah, no, it's a fantastic country. So, yeah, we're lucky we get to go there reasonably often, but I'd encourage anyone you know, to go up to the and Excellent. Now, I noticed, I got an email from John, and he said, I oh, will see you at the event, and I noticed in your signature, oh. <laughs> I noticed in your signature you had in brackets, Tea Geek. Yeah, that's my unofficial, unofficial title. Excellent. So you're a bit of a brew master, aren't you? So yes. tell me how to create the perfect cup of tea. Okay, well, 
there is no black and white to it uh, because tea, you know, there's so many different types of tea and so many different styles of tea. Um, so what I often say is learn the rules and then learn to bend them to your liking. I don't say break the rules, I say bend them to your liking. Um, so for example, black tea, yeah, one of the most popular. Uh, Essentially, you want to steep the belief in the boiling hot water, um, freshly boiled, for at least three minutes. Um, for a small grain of leaf, um, which is typically what's in a tea bag, um, or a loose leaf tea, which is a smaller grade, uh, three minutes. Um, if it's a large leaf, up to five minutes, it takes longer to extract the full character from it. Um, give it a good stir, that helps to really you know, um, what they call agitate the leaf and release all the character. And uh, a quick stir before you pour as well. Uh, and it's all about um, correct heat and correct timing, which brings out the best of tea. But because there's so many different types of black tea on, so many different styles of black tea, um, they will vary. But that's the beauty of it. You, you each become a tea master in a way. It's all about learning to perfect each tea. And it's amazing how hit up people get about that. Well, you know what? I think, John, you and I need to go on camera and we need to do a whole lot of videos on how to make the perfect cup yeah. of tea. What do you reckon? Yeah, I, th I think people will um, like to get involved with that because everyone's got to have their opinion as well. So, oh, very yeah. contentious, yes. <laughs> hey, well, we've got some very special things coming up from you. It's time for all the official speeches. So we're going to bring you over to the screen right now and show you what's going on. Thanks so much, John. That was great. And remember, share your tea story in the news feed because we love to hear from you. Stephanie T, thank you so much for sharing your tea story there. We're going to read that out uh, very, very shortly. So stick around. It's time for the official proceedings here at the Dilmar Global Tea Party. Excuse me, I wonder if I again can uh, grab your attention for a minute if I can, please. Um, I'd like to ask uh, Sir Graham Henry and uh, Lady Raymond Henry if they'd like to come forward and... Uh, a few words, but as they're coming forward, I'll just ask John to uh, to play something on the screen here and cast your eyes that way. So that's a, a clip from the trip that, uh, that the Henrys uh, went up to Sri Lanka in 2013. So uh, I wonder if you'd like to uh, expand on that. Well, where are you going, mother? <laughs> <laughs> I never speak, but I heard him volunteering me on the phone. And I said, you know, I don't speak. He said, I'll, I'll be all right. <laughs> so I had to have one of those drinks first. <laughs> um, I guess my lasting memory of... Sri Lanka was, apart from the amazing hospitality, was the how much the, that company, who strives to produce uh, an excellent product, gives back to the community, whether it's education, whether it's sustainable gardens, uh, whether it's helping women who need a bit of a lift up, who whether it's helping the elephants, and that elephant there, he was named after Graham while we were there. His name's Ted. <laughs> and uh, he's going to be released next year, I think. Five years, yes. And uh, so I guess that was my really overall impression was how much that company gives back to their community. So the, the Dilma family, not just the Fernando family, but the whole of the Dilma family are just awesome in what they do over there. And I don't think people realise just how much goes back into the community. So the philanthropy is amazing. And Graham says I need to talk about the um, 
the bungalow. The bungalow in the tea plantation was here as you can't remember. <laughs> and I was just talking about, Brett and I were just talking about how awesome it was and how you get up in the morning and someone knocks on you and you're ready for your cup of tea and then I've got them, what would you like for lunch? And it was about a three course lunch and then what would you like for dinner? It's about a four course dinner with wine. And would you like high tea in the afternoon? We go, no, it's all right, thank you very much. <laughs> um, but it was stunning. The, the, you know, it was an amazing experience. And um, yeah, we're even grateful to, to the Fernando family and the Dilma people for the experience they gave us there. We're going to the Saturday East. I think we've done very well. <laughs> I think we can put a full stop now. <laughs> you can talk about, what the, about the rugby, rugby game. game. <laughs> No, no, we had a fabulous time, you know, the Gilmar people and the Fernando family were superb to us. Um, we'd done a couple of things back here and they wanted to repay us for doing that. Uh, we did about this much and they did about this much, so it was, it was fabulous. And we, we spent some time with the tea, tea plantations and the tea trails and, and we enjoyed that and we enjoyed the people. The people who were in those tea plantations are, are very small people. And, um, but very enthusiastic, as you can see the kids there. So I try to coach them a bit of rugby well. You know, it's the hardest session I've ever done in my life. You know? <laughs> These kids had no idea, but they were enthusiastic, and there was one ball, and they all wanted to get hold of the ball. And so they were fighting over it, and they, all, they just loved it. It's amazing. Like, Sri Lanka's a cricket playing country, you know, and they're, they're up there, we were ranked probably top six in the world, thereabouts. Sometimes they're number one, so they've done exceptionally well. But they're just as keen on rugby, but they're just too small. But they love it. And I went to a, I went to a big game, which is a very traditional game, a bit like King's College playing Auckland Grammar School in Auckland. And so it was Royal, who are Palumbo-based, playing Trinity, who are um, Candy-based. And it was in Candy. And there was 27,000 people at this rugby game. Unbelievable, right? There's, there's going to be twice that many here on Saturday night. So you can imagine the crowd. And, and, a, and a dog. I was going to mention the dog. And Jonathan Kaplan, who, who's the most cat referee in the history of the game, South African, not bad, um, he, was, he was the referee. So it was a great day, and they, there was a dog on the field, and there's like Sri Lankan's got plenty of dogs, right? There's dogs everywhere. So that was a bit of entertainment as well, but the standard was superb. Like I think they could have played at the bottom of our 1A competition in Auckland for secondary school, so they're pretty good. So I was, I was very impressed. And then we went back to Colombo and spent some time at Royal and talked to the kids and they came in and, and the Fernando family and, and a few of us just got with their, with their prefix and we just talked about leadership and education and so on. I was very impressed, actually, very impressed. Um, so, you know, I think they should have an under five, under 85 kilo World Cup. So uh, perhaps, perhaps we could, we could st kick that off and, and, and Dilmar can be the number one sponsor. <laughs> and, they, and they could be the world champions in rugby under five, 85 kilo. All right. We also went to... We also went to see the elephants. So these these elephants have lost their parents. So what does that mean? Orphans. Orphans. That's what I'm looking for. <laughs> uh, so they're orphans, and they said, "Well, look, we want to name one after you." And I, I felt very privileged. So I saw the elephant. I, there was all these wonderful looking creatures, and this is little scrappy little baby. <laughs> and that's why they gave it to me. <laughs> and I. I wasn't allowed to touch it. Uh, you're not allowed to touch them because they release them into the wild and apparently if you, they get too friendly that affects the, their mentality. So they need to survive. And so we called the elephant Ted. And so, Meryl, if you want to invite me up, I'll come up and release it. <laughs> All right? You got that? You know, I'll release it, Meryl. So you see. <laughs> <laughs> and Raymond will come too, of course. All right, so just let us know when you want it to pop up. <laughs> All right, so we had a great time. So we were very fortunate, and uh, and we'd love to go back at some stage, Meryl. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for listening. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you, Sir Graham, Lady Raywin. It's uh, very enlightening. Um, Meryl, I hope you are listening out of your budget. Um, <laughs> moving along, I'd like to ask uh, Kyle Mills um, to come forward. And uh, Kyle, as I said, former New Zealand black cap cricketer. Uh, Kyle captained New Zealand uh, on the 2013 tour uh, to Sri Lanka. Uh, recently retired. Um, and has had um, numerous tours to Sri Lanka over those years from 2001 to 2015 as a black cap. So, thanks, Carl. Um, thanks, Scotty, for inviting me along tonight. And, yeah, I'm a former cricketer, and uh, cricket's a pretty unforgiving sport at times. And just to give a bit of history about that, uh, you might not believe this, but Nigel Scott was actually a former first-class cricketer, and it might be hard to believe looking at him today, but um, <laughs> <laughs> we're from the same cricket club at Haupakaranga. And when Scotty uh, was retired from cricket, he got demoted down to look after the second team within the club, and I was a 15-year-old coming up. And I was batting with Scotty one day, and what was an easy two, which was a quick single for Scotty, well, ended in dismissal of Scotty, he was run out, and apparently it was my fault. And so when Scotty called me up last week to attend today, he, every time I actually see Scotty, he refers back to when I ran him out 23 years ago. <laughs> and obviously in sport, you know, the All Blacks lost last week, and I'm sure Sue Ted will attest to this, you, sort of, you review it straight away, but then you've got to put it behind you. Well, Scotty, it was 23 years ago. <laughs> I think we can put it in the back pocket from here on in, and I'm here tonight to repay that favour. <laughs> <laughs> Elephant memory. Elephant memory, there you go. But look, I was very fortunate enough to, um, to have played cricket and went to the subcontinent many times. I would have gone to Sri Lanka at least up to eight or nine times. And uh, I love the place for, for so many reasons. Uh, I love the hustle and bustle of uh, Colombo. I love the beaches of, of down south in Gaul, and obviously you can get up to, to Kandy and to Danbula, just the remoteness of those places where you're, you're literally in the jungle, and sometimes when you're up there, you pinch yourself, and it's hard to think that you're actually there playing international sport. But it was uh, certainly an eye-opener on many occasions, because as we saw on the TV screen just then, the Sri Lankan people, are the incredibly lovely people, they're always smiling and hos hospitable, and just welcoming you into the country, but you step over that line on the cricket field, they, they're not quite like that. And my career has kind of coincided with some of the greats of the game. Uh, if you're cricket fans, I'm sure the names Kumar uh, Singakara, uh, Mahala Jarawardena, uh, Mira Lutheran, um, Tilakrat Dulshan, and uh, there's one more, but absolute uh, greats of the game kind of coincided the same era I sort of came through and all in the one team. So always an exceptionally tough challenge to, uh, to play against, especially on the shores of uh, Sri Lanka. But what was also tough when you're up in uh, Kandy and, and Dan Bullet is um, could you literally stay in the jungle when you're staying at the hotels up there, but uh, encountering the wildlife on a, on a daily occurrence uh, around the hotel. And I remember one of the hotels up in, uh, up in Kandy, at one end of the uh, the hotel was, which I thought was a gang of monkeys, but that doesn't exist. It's actually a troop of monkeys, so I had to look it up today. <laughs> and then the other end of the hotel was another troop of monkeys, and they were rival troops. But in my mind, then, it was the rival gang, so it just sounded a lot better. And for us Kiwi boys on tour, this is really intriguing, and it became quite a game for us to try and get the two troops of monkeys to play off with each other. And so we enticed with food to get one monkey one troop of monkeys close and the other troop of monkeys close as well. But the monkeys were far smarter than us because the ones that didn't get involved in that little hustle, they walked into our room to stole all the sugar and the tea and the sugar. <laughs> and very smart because the sliding doors on the rooms that led up to the balcony always said, don't feed the monkeys and always lock your door. So what do us Kiwi boys do? We feed the monkeys, leave the doors unlocked and the monkeys come in. But uh, there's always something happening in Sri Lanka and obviously um, Dorma tea is, is prevalent. Uh, all over the place, and it's just great to be a New Zealander, um, to be associated with cricket in the great country of Sri Lanka, to be back in my home country of New Zealand, and to have a product from Sri Lanka like Dilma just doing so well. So, Scotty, thanks for inviting me along today, mate. Thank you. Yeah. Well, that leaves me. Thank you uh, very much, uh, Sir Graham, Lady Raywin, Henry, and uh, Milsey for. Uh, 
sharing some of your experiences of Sri Lanka with us. Um, most appreciated. Um, I know that Sir Graham and Lady Ray and Henry have to get away to another engagement. Um, very busy at this time of the year. And uh, that would be because, of course, on Saturday night out here, um, there's, a, there's a little bit of a, a correlation between uh, what we're talking about, what we're celebrating here with Salon Tea. And if you take a look on the packs of any Salon Tea or Dilma, you'll see a logo that is on there, which is the symbol of Salon quality, of quality of Sri Lanka, Salonese tea. And that happens to be a lion. And of course, on Saturday night, there is that other lions that are coming together uh, to have a go at our mighty ABs. So, uh, yeah, we're here to celebrate the lion of Sri Lanka, not necessarily the lions that are going to be here on Saturday night. So hopefully it does go our way. But uh, once again, thanks so much for, uh, for sharing your stories. Please, everyone, there is so much food. There is still some uh, Salonese tea cocktails. There is cups of fine Dilma. Please continue to mix and mingle and uh, have a little bit of a chat and enjoy that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Well, no my hearty my welcome to New Zealand. We are live at the iconic venue Auckland's Eden Park, the home of amazing uh, rugby games, one of which is happening this Saturday. Now we have a very special event. It is a global tea party here uh, in support of 150 years of uh, since the first crop ever of Salon tea being produced. And I believe we've got some great interviews coming up. Ray, do you want to come on over and have a quick chat? Now, if you're a fan of MasterChef, Look, you need to know this guy, or you probably already know this guy. This is Master Chef Ray McNally. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you very much. Now, you've got a bit of a tea story, haven't you? Oh, yeah, look, I was lucky enough to be invited up to um, Sri Lanka by the Dilma people. The Dilma people are fantastic. Not only do they, you know, kind of incredible product, do they be producing this incredible product, product Salon Tea, for such a long time. They're humanitarian, they're philanthropists. Yes. They put a lot back into the um, communities, they look after their workers. I'm filled with admiration. I am just lucky enough to be actually the person that got to represent the key to a new house that they had given to some of their workers who needed to have a new place. Yeah. That must that have been mind blowing for you. Incredible. I felt, I was, I felt, I felt, now I have to say, we've had in the stream here a whole bunch of people sharing their tea stories and this is what I really love to hear. We've had um, Angela Scott say congratulations still on tea, great milestone, Dilma has the best tea, I have to agree, I drink 10 cups of it a day, love it. Another tea story, Tracy McGregor, we met Brett McGregor yes, today, yes, we've got Tracy yeah. on the stream as well. She just said, love your tea Dilma, my tea story, my mum used to reuse her tea bags on her, her eyes, it was her number one beauty tip. So not only tastes great, but makes your eyes not so oh, yeah. puffy as well. Tired eyes, tea bags, perfect. And I, think, yeah. and I think so many of our mothers did, and I do, I have to say. And that's what the great thing is about tea. It brings us all together, and we've all got our own connection and our own tea story. Is that right, Ray? Uh, absolutely. When I think of the things that I got to do when I was on that tour in Dilma, I mean, it, it totally cemented my love of tea. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I just, just, you know, incredibly hospitable people. And I just had such a good time. You know, we, we stayed in tents in the jungle. We actually had the whole of the village watching us the whole time wow. because they were fascinated. I don't think it's a lot to do. Yeah. You know, we're out in the jungle and you know, we're speaking with the chefs. But we, we had a great time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, I have to say, um, Ray and I co host your cooking show yeah. every Tuesday here in New Zealand at 6 30. And if, the first thing I do when I walk into Ray's house is, would you like a cup of tea? That's the first yeah. thing we do, right? Yeah, yeah. It's not just a Kiwi thing, it's a global thing. And that's why we're doing this tea party. It's the Dilma Global 24 hour tea party with the first live event happening here in Auckland. Thank you, Ray. Yeah, you a lovely tea story. The, the, the tea included dishes that I made while I was up there. Oh, oh, right. oh. So keep watching the stream because we've got some yeah. great recipes coming up. Oh, oh, I think we're just about no, finished actually. No, Ray, thank you so much. Yeah.
come on over Felicity. Now this is the lady behind today's event. This is Felicity from Toronto. Communications, how are you feeling? How are you? I'm really good, thank you. What a huge success today. Oh, fantastic. Unbelievable that we have the lights on at Eden Park, the iconic rugby park, and to have Sir Graham Henry with us to celebrate 150 years of Salon Tea. Look, it, it's amazing. We, when we think about it, tea is such a huge part of our culture. Right around the world, not just New Zealand, uh, everywhere. Has tea been a big piece of your life as well? It has. I, I laugh because when they said they were celebrating the 150 years of Salon Tea, it made me think Fact, my mum and dad used to get their tea in a wooden box. Now, oh, a lot yeah. of people might remember that. It was sort of like a little tea chest, and it was uh, very much full of loose leaf before the tea bag day. And, um, you know, sort of they used to put um, one spoonful of tea leaves into the pot, which had to be warm first, yes. um, for each person, and then one for the pot. And then they used to sort of stir it and um, let it brew, because you had to leave it for three minutes to brew properly. So you've got the proper tea. Yeah. But these days, we've got all sorts of things. I know, things. you've got amazing yeah. infusions and everything. Well, the, the ones that the um, Kiwis are, women are loving at the moment is this rose with French vanilla. It's my favourite, I have to say. It's you know, really, really lovely. And there's a, this is my one, peppermint, peppermint leaves with salon cinema. Oh, love. It's amazing what they make now. And the tea bags, you know, aren't they amazing? They're sort of like triangle shape and sort of silky. And so it's come a long way you know, from the, the old wooden tea chest now into the silky, you know, sexy tea bags and all the rest of it. I totally agree. Now we've had in the stream some people actually sharing their tea stories. Oh, cool. So I just saw one here. I'll just flick the yeah. screen up here. Stephanie T actually said, Stephanie T, hello to you. Thanks for watching. Stephanie T actually said, my parents travel overseas a lot and mum always takes a couple of boxes of Dilma Extra Strength Earl Grey. Yeah. A good move, I would agree there. Um, they are due home from a six week trip to Asia tonight and I made sure she had a new box ready. You are a good daughter there. I love that. I think oh, that's fantastic. Great. I take my tea with me, do you? I, my favourite is um, the Dilma, um, uh, it's green tea with lemon grass in it. And um, it's really, really popular because it is sold out at the moment. Um, so I do, I travel with my tea bags. I actually travel with my teacup as well because I like a big cup of tea. So I like uh, extra strength, anything extra strength, and I'm a big Earl Grey fan. Oh, cool. Excellent. Yeah, they have a very good extra strength. Oh, I know. Oh, I've been drinking it for years. Look, thank you so much, Felicity. Great to have you here. Congratulations. Thank you very much. You're welcome. So we are, if you're just joining the stream, we are here live at the iconic venue, Eden Park here in Auckland. It's a 150-year celebration of an incredible event. 150 years ago, James Taylor, a Scotsman, actually planted the first crop of Ceylon tea ever in Sri Lanka. And that's what we're celebrating today, 150 years of Ceylon tea. This is the Dilmar Global High Tea Party happening around the world. It's a 24-hour global event. We're delighted to have you with us to celebrate. We've had some amazing guests here, foodies, sports people, and we have so much happening here. We're trying amazing cocktails made from tea. We've got tea, tea everywhere. And uh, this is your opportunity in the stream. We can see you on there. Share your tea story with us. Now we have a very special guest. This is John Burton coming onto the stream. Hello, John. How are you? Thank you. Really great to have you with us. Now, there's a bit of a connection with John Burton, I know this name, and Dilma. Tell us the story about that connection. Well, it goes back a long time, but, but when we go back to when Meryl you know, first decided to import tea, I mean, Meryl goes back a long, long way, well before Dilma, when he was uh, learning tea, but he didn't really, uh, he didn't really uh, introduce Dilma to the market until he was in his late 50s. I so, did not know that. No, no, well, Dilma has only been only been around since since the late 80s and that's when when Mel decided to do it and he told me and uh, he said look I, I'm going to launch a tea and I'm going to call it Dilma and I said well where's that from he said after Dilham and Malik oh, what a cool story and I said we haven't got a show in New Zealand there's Joyce and Bell but look yeah. it's completely knocked it out so it like Dilma and Malik would win the ball I, I would agree and in fact most of, I would say probably 99% of my family and friends all drink Dilma, what do you think has been the success behind the brand? Well, it's all because of uh, using Salon tea, using Salonese tea, because, see, I go back three generations of tea. My grandfather, my father, they dealt with Meryl, 
And in those days when all the tea chests and, and you know, five pound boxes came here, wow. all, all, leaf, all leaf tea. And then basically, uh, you know, that was just the start. So when, when New Zealand stopped drinking uh, uh, Ceylon tea because they choice of the bell started using uh, tea from China, Indonesia, well then basically gave Dilma an opening because for you to go back to the original taste. That's really what it's going to Now what we've been noticing in the news feed here, so people are starting to share their tea stories and I think we always have a great story of maybe when we were a child and we connected to tea in some way. Some people have messaged in and said their mum used to use the tea bags afterwards as their, um, to put on their eyes, it was part of their beauty treatment. But I want to know, what's your special tea story? Well, I suppose I spent a lot of time in Sri Lanka and it was very, very difficult there. Um, but then, you see, when, when I suppose the whole thing about tea, it's such a universal drink, it's such an enjoyable drink. But when we go back to the reason we're talking here, which is 150 years, what did, what did tea replace in Sri Lanka? It replaced coffee. All it was a coffee industry based and, and Rust took it out and then, then tea, tea came in and that's where it all started. But my, my tea base goes back to my father, who I think is a, it's a great story. When, when New Zealand played, my father's a double international for Sri Lanka, played both cricket and rugby. Uh, the Lions in 1950 stopped there on the, on the way through and they played one test match against against Ceylon. They, they lost 44 6 and, 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 and uh, Dad obviously the colonial to play rugby. And they uh, and then the boat went on to New Zealand for that Lions tour. So. Wow, what an incredible tea story, John. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. And thank you for being with uh, with us here today. Such an honour to have you and to meet you today as well. Thank you. Look, thank you all for joining us. It is a very special day here at Eden Park here in New Zealand. Kia ora to you if you've just joined the stream. I'm Monique Bradley from Your Fix TV. I'm an avid tea drinker. In fact, I called myself the Height Tea Queen for a number of years. I'm all about tea. And it's a real honour for me to celebrate with you everywhere around the world. It's a 24-hour global tea party hosted by Dilma in every time zone around the world at 5pm. Raise your cup of tea and celebrate 150 years of Selom tea being in existence and in our lives. Well, I do believe it is time for us to head away. Thank you to you, uh, whether you're watching on the Dilma International page, Dilma New Zealand, or if you're watching on your Fox TV, we've loved you uh, being with us today. Thank you for sharing your tea stories and keep drinking tea. Take care. Ka kite anu. See you again. Enjoy 24 hours of celebrating tea. Goodbye.